Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. State Representative Melissa Sargent is a Democrat from Madison seeking the 16th state Senate seat. The primary is August 11th. Melissa, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Good to see you. Well, I've been to your camp- campaign website. You have many, many issues. I'm going to ask you to pick one, okay, maybe two, your top one, maybe two campaign issues, please. Um, So ultimately, there are a lot of needs in um, the 16th Senate District and frankly for people all across the state of Wisconsin. But I think what rises to the top is the fact that people want a public servant who is going to put the needs of our families and the people of the state of Wisconsin first. Um, And quite frankly, that means prioritizing the people over special interest groups um, and backroom deals in the Capitol building. doing government in an open and transparent way, being available, being someone who listens um, and actually has feet in the ground in the district, spends time with the people um, and opens their door to the community is really important to the people of this district based on the conversations that I've had with folks all across the 16th Senate District. And I look forward to being able to continue that um, work ethic and the history that I have in, in providing those opportunities for people to make sure that their voices are heard and that I will advocate tenaciously for what is best for the people of our state. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, you know, Americans over the last two months have a whole better idea of what happens when sometimes when police officers have people in custody. The governor's nine bill package, police reforms, uh, bar choke holds, bar uh, no knock warrants, universal training standards. Do you support that, or do you uh, do you, does it go far enough? Um, I absolutely do support um, Governor Evers' plan to ensure standards for policing and how it is that we treat people in custody. And I support um, the many pieces of legislation that my Democratic colleagues and I have put forward over the last session and more um, to reform. Um, our state to address our egregious racial disparities. Wisconsin is the worst when it comes to racial disparities. And I understand that it's not just policing that is going to make a dent on that. Um, We need to be having these tough conversations um, and moving forward. And I think it's really disappointing that our current legislature is not planning in coming forward and considering any of these policies um, until 2021 is what I, I recently read in an article. Everyone in Wisconsin deserves to feel safe where it is that they live, um, where they recreate, where they send their kids to school. And that is not the case right now in our state. Um, We need to ensure that everyone can dream for all it is that that they should be able to achieve and that kids feel that their lives are valued and that um, people want to continue to call Wisconsin home. To me, it is imperative that we invest in mental health services, addiction services, recovery services, as well as um, redefine how it is that we do policing in the state of Wisconsin. And it is exciting to me that the Wisconsin Professional Police Association and so many law enforcement officers are wanting to be part of this conversation as well. This does not need to be a partisan issue. Quite frankly, it is not a partisan issue anywhere except in the Capitol building. Um, And I believe that we absolutely need to be doing more to listen to the marginalized voices in our communities, lift them up and address these terrible disparities. Uh, Wisconsin I has covered the press conferences which you endorsed the governor's People's Commission idea to draw draw the next set of congressional legislative districts. Uh, why why is that so important to you? Um, because politicians should not be picking their constituents. Uh, the people should be picking their politicians. And frankly, Wisconsin, um, here's another exciting fact. We are one of the most gerrymandered states in the nation. And, um, you know, in my district, it is very, very blue. It leans very far to the left. And there are other districts that lean very far to the right. Um, It is better for the people of our state to have pragmatism inserted into the political process. I wholly support Governor Evers' plan. um, And uh, it was 
frankly, the first bill that I introduced with my de Democratic colleagues when I was a freshman in the state assembly. And we have seen that pattern with our freshman Democratic um, assembly members introducing that bill session after session. And it has grown to be bipartisan in the Capitol building. That is exciting. Um, and I look forward to watching that process unfold as the census um, is, census data is brought back to our state and we are redrawing the legislative lines. Wisconsin has also covered press conferences which you have endorsed legalizing both medical and uh, recreational marijuana. Do you want to spend a minute, uh, your, your, your position on those? Absolutely. Uh, I could spend more than a minute on it if, if you wanted. I know the most dangerous thing about cannabis in Wisconsin is that it's illegal. And I've been beaten on that drum for many, many years. Um, in the state assembly, I've been proud to be a champion for full legalization of cannabis. Um, my bill supports the medicinal aspects. It embraces the economic opportunities. It addresses racial disparities. Um, it, involves criminal justice reform, and it provides an opportunity for small um, small family farms to um, become involved in this. Currently in Wisconsin, we have two farms a day on average, um, shuttering their doors. I realize that legalizing cannabis isn't gonna solve all of these problems that I just mentioned, but it will certainly make a dent on many of them. Um, Wisconsin needs to end its senseless prohibition on cannabis. We are an island surrounded by Midwestern states at this point, and I will continue to prioritize and advocate for this issue when elected to the Senate. The governor has said we may see a two billion, that's with a B, shortfall in general fund tax collections because of the pandemic. Now the strategy is to come back after the November three session and deal with any potential shortfall um, the, is the choice cut spending or raise taxes and fees? How, how do you see that uh, choice? Well, certainly this is something where we need to be bringing our elected officials and governments from all levels together to have these conversations. Um, I've heard uh, Congressman Pocan and Senator Baldwin talking about what it is that they believe they can do at the national level. I know that our county board and our city councils, um, our town boards are having those conversations as well. Um, I know firsthand that local governments need to be part, uh, part of how it is that we move forward with this. Um, I don't believe that we should be placing the burdens on our property tax owners, um, but at the same time, we are gonna have to be pragmatic. If we can afford to give billions of dollars of tax credits to corporations and special interest groups in the state of Wisconsin, I believe that we um, actually should be prioritizing uh, the people of our state and figuring out how it is that we come through this global pandemic. It's a, it's a public health crisis, um, none like anyone in our generation has seen. Um, so that we can make sure that we're moving Wisconsin forward and investing and living, lifting up the people of our state. No business is going to have prosperity without <laughs> ensuring that um, their workers are safe and secure. Um, and so to me, that, that is a number one priority. Uh, uh, when I interview legislative candidates from Madison and Dane County, many of them have taken a position on the Air Force decision to base the next generation of F-35s at Truax. Have you taken a, a position on that? That was a decision that was um, ultimately in the hands of a Trump appointee in, in Washington, D.C. Um, I did, I, I do, and I have heard the voices of the people of my current assembly district um, having grave concerns about noise uh, as well as water pollution and uh, the militar militarization of our nation. Um, I did not vote in support of a proposal that was brought before the legislature to endorse um, the F-35s coming, but at the end of the day, that wasn't a decision that was on my shoulders. Um, they are coming, and I am going to continue to work very hard um, to ensure that we are successful with them being here, that we are mitigating our PFAS contamination, that we are doing everything we can to um, address sound pollution and also make sure that the people that do work um, within the base, um, that they feel safe and, and welcome in our community. For many years, schools and local governments have had to live with caps on their property taxes because Wisconsin is a high property tax state. Uh, if you're in the Senate, next session, uh, is it time to get rid of those caps or keep them in place to control property taxes? Um, so part of, you know, part of Act 10 was the levy limits um, and that was 
it instituted before I was in the legislature, um, but it is something that I have heard over and over again from local government officials, mayors, county board, um, supervisors, county chairs, um, et cetera, that it constrains their ability uh, to do the work that they need to do for the people within their communities. It creates a difficult challenge for our local governments. Um, and I very much believe that um, we need to support our local governments and how it is that they want to be in investing and in, in supporting their communities. Um, additionally, I believe that we need to be looking um, for additional tools to support our local governments so that they can grow their communities in a way that they know best that we don't necessarily at the state legislative like uh, level. Um, we can do things such as closing the dark store loopholes. Um, we can do this by um, raising minimum wage so people actually have more money in their pockets they can spend in our local businesses. I'm um, investing in our main street businesses as opposed to within um, big, box, uh, big box stores as well. Um, I am hesitant to support a regressive tax in the state of Wisconsin, such as an increased sales tax. Um, I believe that places a burden um, on economically disadvantaged residents of our state. Um, ultimately, uh, here's another example where legalizing cannabis could uh, bring some revenue into the state of Wisconsin that uh, actually would provide us with um, additional resources to invest in our communities and, and close some of the, the budget constraints as well as um, give tools to our local governments. I believe we need to put everything on the table um, and we need to invest in regionally based solutions and support our local governments. Last year, the governor recommended increasing the gas tax 30.9 cents a gallon as a stable source of funding for highways. Uh, are you ready to, uh, again, consider that if you're a state senator next session? Um, I'm absolutely ready to, to consider that. Um, I believe very much that, again, we need to have everything on the table and we can't have it all be about a gas tax or a wheel tax. Um, quite frankly, we need to be investing in multimodal transportation options. Um, we had the opportunity to accept trains in the state of Wisconsin and our previous governor Walker um, shut the door on that opportunity. Um, additionally, we're seeing a lot more people riding bikes um, and uh, looking for other ways to get around um, within our communities. I think that we need, I know that we need a fair and balanced tax um, system and we also need to do it in a way that honors everyone that is using our roads. Oftentimes, um, big trucks and, and other equipment weighs a heavier burden on our roads and there is not a fair tax um, to them. It, it, there's a higher tax on, on everyday consumers. The, the COVID pandemic not only shrinks a lot of uh, tax collections, but it places a great strain on healthcare providers that state government rely on. We've all seen nationally and in Wisconsin the frontline role that hospitals play. Hospitals play. If you're a state senator voting on the next state budget, do hospitals deserve an even greater priority than they may have gotten in the current budget? Well, public health, in my opinion, is um, something that we must prioritize with our upcoming budget and how it is that we invest in the state of Wisconsin. Um, our hospitals, our nurses, and our frontline workers are vital in this conversation, and I believe that we need to be making sure that they do have a seat at the table. Um, the 16th Senate District is fortunate to have many local leaders um, who provide patient care within our communities, whether it's UW hospital clinics or smaller hospitals like the Stoughton Hospital. Um, and these hospitals have frankly been on the front lines of the COVID pandemic, working to respond to and keep our communities and the people that call it home safe. They deserve to have the resources that they need, including PPE, contact tracing, testing, protective gear for frontline workers, Additionally, we need to make sure that people have the ability to go into these hospitals and clinics and take care of their everyday needs that aren't related to COVID. Or if we don't continue our preventive care, we're gonna be in a great world of hurt as, as um, our healthcare needs grow in, in those capacities. As a kidney donor, I know how important it is um, to be able to have access to my healthcare providers. Um, I am proud to support our Healthcare Heroes Act. I've been proud to stand on the front lines with our nurses and our firefighters um, and so many others. Um, we absolutely need to make sure that we don't forget about our frontline workers. Yes, the hospitals are important and I've talked a lot about them, but someone we don't talk a lot about are our daycare, our childcare workers. And I believe that we need to put them in that same bucket. Um, we absolutely need to accept our federal healthcare dollars. Additionally, this would help us um, in addressing many of these needs. 
um, I believe that healthcare is a human right and that we must be taking action now in order to address um, healthcare needs in the state of Wisconsin. Part of that, um, and if I could just add one more thing, is our Medicaid reimbursement rates for our doctors, um, our dental workers, our mental health providers. This is something that I hear over and over again and have since the first day that I was elected into the legislature. Um, healthcare does need to be a big part of the conversation that we are having within our budget. Do we need a state law that says if a business complies with all the uh, COVID health and safety rules and regulations, um, they cannot be the subject of frivolous lawsuits? Um, I don't understand the question that you're asking. I mean, what type of, could you give me a, like what type of business? Sure. Um, well, uh, let's talk about the U.S. Senate. Uh, Mitch McConnell is raising questions about, uh, about another COVID uh, relief package saying uh, legal immunity has got to be part of that. So I, uh, do we need a state law offering legal immunity if a business in good faith has complied with the COVID safety and health rules and regs? And then a consumer comes in and-, and Yes, okay. either, either a customer or an employee. Well, frankly, I think that we need to be investing in our workers. If there's a worker that's going to work um, and to no fault of their own, they contract COVID, whether they're a daycare worker or they're a laborer that's going into someone's house providing plumbing or air conditioning, um, right now in the state of Wisconsin, they have nothing that protects them. And it's the people of the state of Wisconsin, in my opinion, that are really facing big challenges because of this COVID pandemic. And we're not bringing them. I'm sorry, the F-16s are flying over my house. Okay, I understand. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was as loud to you as it was for me, but we just had four F-16s fly over just now. I live very close to the airport. I understand. Um, so I very much believe that we need to make sure that our workers are protected um, if they do contract COVID um, while they are working um, so, that, so that they don't lose wages. So the position where they may lose their home um, or they may go and get a COVID test and they're, they're, they're afraid to get that COVID test because if it becomes positive and they're asymptomatic, they're not gonna be able to go back to work for many weeks and they're gonna lose those wages. Okay. Um, you know, so it is very complicated. Certainly, I do think that we should and can be doing more, but I think just providing immunity to businesses is short-sighted um, and that we need to lift up the, the rights um, of our workers and additionally address um, the important needs of, of folks with um, paid family sick time um, and, and, and policies such as that. Okay, two more questions before the next batch of f 35 fly over your house. The, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, when local governments want to approve major public works projects, should they have to give preferences to uh, Wisconsin companies? And the reason I ask is a study found in 2015 that uh, out-of-state contractors got $72 million in contracts, but that number, 72, more than doubled to $146 million by 2018. Should local governments authorizing public works projects have to give a preference to Wisconsin companies? I believe they absolutely should. Um, and I believe that there are a number of other provisions that we should be um, taking into consideration. Um, we should be reconsidering a lot of our labor, uh, repealing of our labor laws um, that have recently happened in the state of Wisconsin over the last decade. Um, right to work has been terrible for the state of Wisconsin. We need to make sure that we do have prevailing wage. And I absolutely believe that we should be prioritizing um, Wisconsin-based businesses and making not only the Wisconsin-based businesses, but ensuring that they are hiring um, Wisconsinites to work on those projects in Wisconsin. Okay, and last question, um, open seat, 16th Senate. Why are you the most qualified? Um, I am a proud and unapologetic progressive Democrat, a longtime resident of Dane County and a proud single mom of four boys. I have always been committed to moving the state of Wisconsin forward and doing everything that I can to improve the lives of the people of my state and for generations to come. I believe that we need state legislators who can and will answer the hard questions um, and make tough decisions. And I am proud of my track record in the state assembly and I'm committed to continuing that progressive track record in the state Senate. Additionally, my work ethic is one where I work well with people on the other side of the aisle. My experience um, says that I do just that, and I am passionate about making sure that the people of our state are lifted up. I spend an awful lot of time outside of the Capitol building listening to um, and getting ideas from the people of my districts. 
Um, I stand by the work that I have done in the State Assembly. I love Wisconsin, um, and I very much believe that we can do better, and I am committed to, to doing that, and I'm ready to roll my sleeves on day one and, and do just that. State Representative Melissa Sargent of Madison is a Democrat uh, in the uh, primary, uh, the August 11th primary for the 16th Senate District. Melissa, thanks so much for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you. Have a safe day. Thank you. You too. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.